Hello everyone, and welcome back to our mini-series on sorting algorithms. In the previous two episodes, we've discussed both bubble sort and a derivation of bubble sort in cocktail shaker sort. Today, we'll be continuing on talking about derivations of bubble sort through a discussion on odd-even sort. If you've missed the previous two episodes, they're linked in the description below, as well as in a card in the top right corner. Both of those lectures have useful information for today's episode, so I'd suggest checking them out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's jump into the meat of the video. What exactly is odd even sort? Well, by definition, odd even sort is a variation on bubble sort which sorts the list through two phases, an odd phase and an even phase. During the odd phase, we perform a bubble sort on odd indexed elements, and during the even phase, we perform a bubble sort on even indexed elements. Now this might have some of you scratching your head. How can we sort a list using a particular algorithm, but use another algorithm within that algorithm? It seems like an extremely terrible inception parody. Well actually, this is common practice in computer science, and something that will definitely not just be happening this one time. By taking a certain algorithm and only implementing it on certain areas of our data, we can sometimes create something even more efficient than the two parts. This will come into play later on in the series, so keep this idea in mind. Going back to odd even sort, the whole two phase system may seem confusing at first. And believe me, when researching this episode, I too was confused. But it honestly is not as scary as it seems. Let's work through the algorithm together. We start with a single variable, an isSorted boolean, which gets set equal to false. This may look familiar if you've been keeping up with the series. Then, we tell the computer that while this isSorted boolean is equal to false, enter a loop. This is set up in a way to always evaluate to true on our first pass through the loop. Immediately after entering the loop, we set isSorted equal to true. What this basically does is set the list as innocent until proven guilty, or in this case, sorted until proven unsorted. What I mean by this is that until we have proof that the list isn't sorted, we will treat it like it is. Proof, in this case, comes later in the form of swapping values. If we don't ever end up swapping values, well then we know that the list is sorted and can exit the loop and the judge, jury, and executioner in this situation are all represented by the isSorted boolean. To show you what I mean by that, we have to dive into the loops. Now notice how I said loops instead of loop, because remember, we're going to have both an odd and even phase, which will each have their own loop. Let's start with the odd phase. We're going to start at the first odd index of the list, so one, and traverse until we are less than or equal to the last index minus one, increasing our test index by a factor of two. We only go to the second to last index because the next step is going to require us to compare the values at the index to the values at the index plus one. Going to the last index would end up having us compare the last index to the last index plus one, which results in an out of bounds error and nobody likes out of bounds errors, so we'll stop at the second to last index. Now we're traversing by a factor of two because remember, we only want to perform a bubble sort on the odd indexed elements during the odd phase. Considering the fact that we're starting at one and traversing the list by a factor of two means that it will eventually cover all of the odd indexes. So one, three, five, seven, nine, etc., etc. Next, we have an if statement which asks if the value at the index is greater than the value at the index plus one, then we want to enter the if statement, swap the two values, and set is sorted equal to false. This is the evidence that I was talking about earlier. The list is considered sorted until we find a pair of elements which are not in ascending order. Once we find one, we swap them so that they are in ascending order and set is sorted equal to false, because we now know that the list was not sorted when we initially entered the while statement. Cool. 
That's actually all she wrote for the odd phase of our odd even sort. Next, we need to perform a bubble sort on the even indexed elements. Our loop is going to look fairly similar to the odd phase with one slight modification. We are going to start at the first even index of this list, in this case zero, instead of the first. Doing this helps hit all of the even indexed elements. So two, four, six, eight, 10, etc. Other than that, the loop is completely the same as it was for our odd phase. So then we ask if the value at the index is greater than the one at the index plus one. And if it is, we swap the two values and set is sorted equal to false. Believe it or not, those two loops are the complete algorithm for odd even sort. If you've been following along with us throughout this series, then it looks exactly like the definition portrayed it as, a set of two bubble sorts which run on both the odd and even indexes. Now that we know how it works, let's put it to the test on a list of five elements. We start with step one, which is to initialize a single variable, is sorted, which gets set to false. Then we test a while statement, which we will enter as long as is sorted is equal to false. It is, so we enter the loop and move on to step A. Step A has us immediately set our is sorted boolean equal to true, and so we do that accordingly. The next step is a loop which will take us from the first odd index until we are less than or equal to the last index minus one by a factor of two. Now for each index we land on, we're going to perform step i, which is an if statement asking if the value at the index is greater than the value at the index plus one. For this particular set, this means comparing nine and two. Now the value at the index is greater than the value at the index plus one, and so we swap the two values and then set is sorted equal to false. We have found sufficient evidence to prove that the list was not sorted before entering this loop. This means we're going to have to make at least one more pass through the list. But we still have some list left to sort during this pass, so let's continue on. Next, we move up our index by two values, which will take us to the next odd index, or three. Then we go back to that if statement, which asks us to compare the value at the current index and the value at the current index plus one. Comparing four to six, we can conclude that four is less than six, and so we do not need to swap any values. Another thing you'll notice is that if we increase the index by two, we will be greater than the last index minus one. This means we can exit our odd phase loop and enter our even phase loop. This loop instructs us to start at the first even index of the list. So let's put our index at zero. Then we wash, rinse, and repeat with the if statement. So if the value at the index, eight, is greater than the value at the index plus one, which it is, we swap the two values and then set is sorted equal to false. Is sorted is already false, so we don't need to worry about that and we can move on. We move up the index by two and then compare the value at that index with the one right above it. Since the value, nine, is greater than the value above it, four, we enter the if statement and swap the two values. We increase the index by two and see that it's now greater than the last index minus one, and so we can exit the second loop. The next thing we do is go all the way back to the first while loop of our pseudocode. This tells us to continue on with sorting unless is sorted is equal to true. Since we found substantial evidence that the list was not sorted, we have to enter the loop again and continue swapping values. Immediately after entering the loop, we reset is sorted to true. New pass through the loop means that we need new evidence to prove that the list is not yet sorted, meaning is sorted starts as true. We then enter the odd phase of our sort again, setting our index as the first odd index, one. Then comparing eight and four, we can see that eight is greater than four, so we enter the if statement. 
This instructs us to swap the two values and set is sorted equal to false, which we do. Wash, rinse, repeat. We increase the index by two and then compare the value at that index to the one right above it. This is code for comparing nine and six. Since nine is greater than six, we swap the two values. Now, if we increase the index by two again, we'd be outside the range of values. So we can actually exit our odd phase loop and enter our even phase loop once again. We start at zero, the first even index, and compare the value at that index to the one right above it. Since two is less than four, we're set to go there and don't need to swap any values. We increase the index by two, which makes it two, and thus compare eight and six respectively. Since eight is greater than six, we swap the two values. We can then increase the index by two again, and since it's greater than the second to last index, we can now exit the even phase loop. Now this again takes us back to the first while loop, which instructs us to continue if is sorted is equal to false. Now it is, so technically we have to go through the whole process again. But since we are smart, we can see that the list is sorted. What will end up happening is we will go through the odd and even phase once again, see that we don't need to swap any values, and then be able to exit the loop knowing that the list is sorted. That's a lot of work, and I think you guys get the point. So we'll end it there knowing we have had a sorted list using odd even sort. Perfect. That is of course great, but if we want to see this algorithm really go to work, we're going to have to pull up the visualizer. Let's take a look at how the algorithm works on a set of 30 elements. As you can see, it may seem like elements are being swapped randomly, but that's just the two-phase system being put to work. As the list gets closer and closer to being sorted, there's a definite divide between even and odd elements in the list that slowly diverges to make the sorted list. Again, we'll have a full video coming out soon with more visualizations if you're interested. Up next, it's time to talk about time complexity equations. Again, since odd even sort is a variant of bubble sort, its time complexity equations are going to be the same as what we've been discussing in previous episodes. Worst case scenario being O of n squared, average case being O of n squared, and best case scenario being O of n. Space complexity is going to be a constant O of 1 because we still aren't creating any extraneous memory for the list to be sorted. If you want more detail into why these equations are what they are, the card on the top right corner will take you to the bubble sort lecture, which goes more into depth on the actual how and why we got to these equations. Finally, we have to talk about common implementations. Being a derivative of bubble sort, the uses for odd even sort in real life are limited to a small sect of computer science. But luckily, they're not completely bare as cocktail shaker sort and bubble sort war. Odd even sort is mainly used on parallel processors with local interconnections for running local tasks. That, of course, does not mean much but it's still important nonetheless for the inner workings of the computer. So while odd even sort may be another ugly duckling thus far, let's take a moment to appreciate its work on parallel processors with local interconnections by liking the video and subscribing while you're at it. Trust me, it's what odd even sort would have wanted. With that shameless plug out of the way, that concludes our discussion on odd even sort. As a review, it's a derivation of bubble sort which sorts a list through two phases, an odd phase and an even phase. During the odd phase, we perform a bubble sort on odd indexed elements, and during the even phase, we perform a bubble sort on even indexed elements. Next episode, we'll finally begin moving away from variations of bubble sort and talk about bitonic sort. So stay tuned for that by subscribing and hitting the bell to receive all notifications. Thank you for watching.